financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now, here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's topic, taxes and debt, but not death. You always hear death and taxes. Jenny Lingo, welcome back to the show. Nice to, to see you. Good to be here, Ken. Jenny's the tax manager at Thav Gross, so we, uh, we bring her in periodically to address tax issues. We're going to go through them today. Jeffrey Kirshner, good to see you. Nice to see you. Brian Small. Always a pleasure. Everything good? Everything is excellent. All right, so here's the thing. You know, we talk about death and taxes, and I wanted to take the opposite direction on that and say taxes and debt, but not death. Wait, because so everything often... Everything is excellent, followed by... We talk about death and taxes. I mean, seriously, what a lead in. <laughs> Life can have They're both its, inevitable. Life has its ups and downs. So does conversation. <laughs> I so get start it. Start up and then down. But here's what, Jenny, we hear all the time. I'm so stressed, I just want to check out. People get so stressed over the pressure of debt and particularly tax problems that they're desperate. They're, they're, we frequently hear that, and they're, they're expressing a fear and anxiety of hopelessness that can sometimes make them even, you know, they'll express suicidal type of tendencies. Knock on wood, we have not, we've, we've never experienced that actually occurring, but it's a very frightening situation. The definition of desperate, feeling, showing, or involving a hopeless sense that a situation is so bad as to be impossible to deal with. When you don't know how to solve a problem, it always seems hopeless. But the reality is, once you have a solution, it's not hopeless, and then you're not desperate. And the truth of the matter is, it's that simple. We have never encountered a tax problem <coughs> or a debt problem that we couldn't find a solution for. Sometimes there's door A, sometimes there's door B, sometimes there's door C, but there's always a solution. And sometimes you have to create a door. And sometimes you have to create a door. You have to get the wood, the frame, and you build it. Yep. But you, there's always a solution, and people need to realize the key to addressing the problem is simply addressing the problem. If you get the right representation where someone will sort out your options, you can solve the problem. So what I want to do is I want to take a tough problem, a case study, Ted and Sarah, and I want to lay it out and then work through how we're going to solve it. Sh shouldn't it be Alice? Why Alice? Because I usually Ted use Alice. Alice. Ted and Alice. Oh, that was a good, good move. Okay, no, it's Ted and Sarah, but I'm sure I'll use Alice as we go along the way. They own T&T &T Landscaping and Snow Removal. And just so you know, TT stands for tough times. They have tax issues. They've not filed their returns for the last five years. They have estimated their liability, 90000 to the feds, 20000 to the state. They have debt issues. They owe hundred grand in unsecured debt on the business. Ted has guaranteed this debt, supplies and things like that. So he's a guarantor of the debt. Sarah is not. T&T is the corporation that is the principal debtor. They owe $75,000 of debt on their building lease that's in default. They have, Ted has $75,000 of credit cards that he's used in the business. Sarah has $20,000 of credit card debt in her name. And TT is $50,000 behind in its payroll taxes. Sarah, for the last five years, has not been involved in the business. She's a sales associate at a local department store. She makes $40,000 a year, and taxes are withheld from her paycheck. But neither Sarah nor, what's his name? Bill. Ted. 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 Have filed their tax returns. <laughs> okay, so that's, 
That's the basic on their debts. Here's what they own. They own their own home. Fair market value, $250,000. First mortgage, two and a quarter. $40,000 second mortgage. So no equity in the house. They have two cars leased. That's the situation. My first question that I would ask, and I think Jenny would ask when we look at this, is who owns the business? Who owns TT? Is it Bill, Sarah, or both? Why are we wondering? Ted, that? Sarah, or both. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I thought we would mess up Sarah's name, but it's Ted who I'm really screwing up. Well, the reason that we're interested in who owns the business is we want to look at who the IRS is going to look to for the payroll taxes that aren't paid. So what the Internal Revenue Service does is when you haven't, when a business hasn't paid a payroll, the payroll tax, they bring individuals in who are involved in the business. You don't have to be an owner. Some owners are assessed, some owners are not. Some office managers can be assessed and not be an owner. So it's important at that stage of the game that you seek counsel because you're going to be brought in for an interview and what they're doing is trying to determine who to assess personally. So in this case, Ted would likely be the only person assessed for the payroll tax liability um, because it appears Sarah has another job, she's not involved she's in the, out of the business, business, but it's important in how you answer the questions because we could end up bringing Sarah in too. Real important planning thing for when people are forming a business. A lot of times a husband and wife will come in and they're saying we want to start a business, we want to both own the business, I want to be president, the other one vice president, they want to both be check signers, they want to do everything together, okay, because they're, they're, they're cozy and they're happy, which is a nice thing for them to think that way, but from a planning standpoint, we're usually going to say to them, listen, you're still married, you each have a claim on half of the business anyway if you were to get divorced. From a strategic standpoint, it's better to have one responsible and one not. One is not an officer, not a director, not a shareholder, totally distant. And you'll see why when we look at, at Ted and Sarah's situation. So let's assume in this case, Sarah is out of the business. So that means two things. One is the payroll tax liability we're going to put to Ted. And also, we have the issue of the income from TT for the last five years when they haven't filed the returns. That's Ted's income then, Absolutely. not Sarah's. We'll come back from the break, and then Jenny's going to explain how you handle that tax situation. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. 
You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. All right, so back to Ted and Sarah. So, so Jenny, on this payroll tax issue, what's the most critical issue? Uh, check signers. It seems that anyone who is a signatory on the bank account and signs checks and the IRS will summons your bank account to see who's signing checks will get pulled in in order to determine whether they're the person making the decision to pay bills besides the IRS. All right, so that's the 50000 payroll tax issue. Correct. In this case, Sarah's not a check signer, so it's going to all land on Ted. Here's Correct. first now the question is, we got to get tax returns filed Absolutely. for the last five years. So should they file married filing joint or what should they do? In this case, I would most likely suggest married filing separate. Now, the reason that is, is they've not filed in five years. If they had made the mistake and already <coughs> filed married filing jointly, they're stuck with that. We cannot amend and go back to married filing separate. So in this case, it appears that... Sarah's been working and she's having taxes withheld. So if we file married filing separately, Sarah is not likely going to owe any taxes. She might even get a refund. She might. So in this instance, we're going to shift all the tax liability to the appropriate party, which is Ted. So here, here's how you have to look at it. It's, you know, we're working through solving a problem. We're solving the problem for Ted and Sarah from this perspective. We have to get control of the liability so that we have a method of getting it paid or get, getting rid of it. And we have to find a direction where we can keep Ted and Sarah in business in the future so that they can make money. So Sarah's okay. We're, we're saving Sarah. We're not letting her get caught with the liability from T&T. Ted's going to take the payroll tax liability. Ted will be liable for the taxes, the income taxes that were earned on T&T during those five years. Sarah's clean. The only pro only thing Sarah has is twenty thousand dollars of credit card debt. All the rest of the liability, the hundred thousand unsecured debt, the eighty-five thousand dollar credit card debt, the income taxes, and the fifty thousand payroll tax liability is all sitting on Ted. That is a good strategy. You want to have one spouse as clean as possible. So Sarah is no longer desperate, but Ted is. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Sarah's feeling good, but that's an important point because a lot of times with a husband and wife, if the wife is feeling bad, they're both going to be feeling bad. Okay, so great. You, should, you probably want to bash we, me we, for that. We, and we, the vice versa is also we true. We just shifted all of the liabilities to Ted effectively. So what's next? How do we... What about got, the business? What do we do about the business? What do we do about Ted? What do we do about? It? I've got two. Well, is the business making questions. any money? What about Ted, and what about the business? Well, is the business making any money? You're asking the best question you can ask when it comes to the business, because Ted and Sarah come in and they say we want to continue the landscaping business, but we want to get rid of all the debt. And the first question is, you don't want to continue the landscaping business if you can't run the business in a way in which you earn income, you pay its taxes and its bills, so it has to be profitable. I mean, yeah, that's the analysis I always do, is start to look at their profit and loss without their debt service. If, if they had no debt, would the business be able to pay Ted a salary? Would he be able to take home some money, pay his quarterly income taxes, and make it worthwhile? If Ted ends up making $8,000 a year after all is said and done, Ted could probably make more money flipping hamburgers at McDonald's. Oh. On the other hand, if Ted's making real money, $25,000, $45,000 a year, if he didn't have the debt service to meet, then 
it's possibly worthwhile for Ted to somehow continue in business. But should Ted continue in this business? Well, I think also before we tell someone that this business isn't working and you need to close it, a lot of times I take a look at what created the debt. Is this a startup and we have all of this debt, but we're expecting to make profit in the future? Did you have some bad contracts or, or that was, we can get rid of? Was it going through the recession where you lost a bunch of business and now you've recovered, it, but you because you became so settled in debt back in 2012 and 13, you can't get from under it. The big the point here is, and Brian, I, I, both of you are saying the right thing. You have to analyze the business and make a decision that says, can I go forward and make a profit in the business if I'm able to get rid of the debt or if I'm able to function with the debt under control? Let's assume in this case with Ted and Sarah, they think they can do that and the numbers bear out. They've but got the some good IRS contracts. IRS is all over Ted. What's How do we do? get the assets out of T&T? so that they can still stay in business. Well, the first Can you do it? Is it possible, Jay? It may be possible. The the first thing though that we have to look at is that 50,000, although I know that sounds like a lot as far as IRS debt for business, it is not a huge amount. They will set up a payment plan. But if we look at Ted and Sarah, the first thing I want to look at is what is the value of their assets? What is the value of the vehicles, the trucks that they have? and their um, accounts receivable, and also their, their client list. And if it's not worth very much, say they're just starting up, what we may do is try to sell the assets to a new business, submit the information to the IRS, and have them agree to releasing the lien. Now let me explain, this is what I want to do based on, on looking at for a couple for, for a couple other reasons. TT also has 100000 of unsecured debt to other creditors, and Ted has $85,000 of credit card debt that's related to the business. If there's a way of getting the assets out of TT into a new company, and the new company doesn't have the obligation to the unsecured creditors and to the credit card, uh, you know, that total of $185,000 worth of debt, the new company has a much better a ability to function and operate, and then all we have to do is solve Ted's liability problem to the unsecured creditors and to the tax authorities. But don't you have to be careful about any type of fraudulent transfer? What we do in that case is we do an appraisal of the assets of the company. We bring in an outside company to appraise it. Let's suppose they, all this equipment is used equipment. Let's suppose the number is $20,000. Then Ted and Sarah have to go borrow $20,000 cash from family and friends or somebody they form NUCO and they offer the $20,000 to the IRS to buy out the assets. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you're approaching retirement and don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your investments, and your savings. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Putting a solid strategy in place with Samasco Law legally protects your assets as well as your wishes. Since a will doesn't cover you medically or financially, Samasco Law goes beyond ordinary asset management protection to safeguard everything you have. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 
888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. It's time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers to listen to us Thursdays, 3 to 4 p.m. for Law & Reality Now on 910 a.m. with Cliff Russell. We've got a seminar coming up Wednesday, August 16th, 6 to 7.30 p.m., 300 Reasons Not to Wait on Doing an Estate Plan. We're going to go through estate planning steps for the middle aged, avoiding probate, avoiding the big mistakes people are making these days in trying to handle this estate planning on their own. Attendees will also be eligible for a free durable power of attorney for all their college aged children if they go ahead and do an estate plan. There will also be a $300 certificate to those attending. The, the seminar will also talk about estate planning needs for mom and dad. Pat Samasco will join us and talk about elder law care issues on that point. I want to remind our viewers to always go to the websites, thavgross.com, wanreality.com. You can always click and request a free consultation, whether it's for debt issues, tax issues, elder law issues with Pat Samasco, disability or workers comp issues with Jeffrey Kirshner, you can call 888-235-HELP to schedule a consultation or you can click and request a consultation on the websites. We'll be right back. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. Worth they have gross, our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Fav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Fav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Fav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. All right, back to Ted and Sarah. We're trying to get them to a clean slate and a fresh start. So. NUCO is formed, they borrowed 20000 from family, they give the IRS the 20000 IRS reduces the lien. We now have the assets over to NUCO. We still have the problem, Brian, and, and what NUCO's do we do? NUCO's owed by Sarah. What do we do about the, uh, the $100,000 of unsecured debt, the $85,000 of credit card debt? What do we do about that? We can't, get, well, we can't discharge the taxes in bankruptcy, Craig, right? Well... It depends on the type of tax. They're payroll taxes. Payroll taxes are non-dischargeable. Okay, so we can't but do we that. But we got to get rid of everything else. How do we do it? We file a Chapter Seven bankruptcy for Ted. I do file it now. When do you file that? Actually, there's a strategy you could use. You could file it before you've created NUCO or after you've created NUCO. In my in this situation, for Bill, I mean for Ted. Ted. I like to call and him Bill. and Sarah to get out of all of their debt, including Sarah's twenty thousand credit card. I would file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy before. for Ted and Sarah before the creation of NUCO because Sarah went out and borrowed $20,000, creating an asset that, that she didn't need to create. I totally buy it. So we're going to file that bankruptcy, and by filing the bankruptcy, we get rid of the 100000 of unsecured debt, the $85,000 of credit card debt that, that 
Ted incurred, the $20,000 of credit card debt that Sarah, they still keep their house because they have no equity in the house anyway. They just continue to make their payments and they're not that far underwater. Jenny, now what, the only problem we have left, and then they form NUCO, and we do the 20,000 transaction. NUCO now is in the landscaping business, it's, and, Jenny, and Sarah owns it. Okay. Okay. How do we get rid of the tax debt for Ted? Well, what it's looking like here, based on where they're starting from, is Ted will likely qualify for an offer and compromise. So we're going to file the returns, married filing separately. Ted is going to have a liability. We're going to take his income tax and the payroll taxes and file an offer so for him. Let's assume that's like 150000 to the feds, and he also owns, owes the state twenty, thirty thousand okay. dollars 30000 Can you get rid of all of it? Most likely, yes. Um, we would look at what Ted is going to be making. So we would have NUCO start paying Ted likely as um, we'll an employee. We'll put him on as a $20,000 supervisor? Well, he could probably make uh, significantly more than that and still qualify. We would have to look at the income and expenses, and he could qualify for an offer from anywhere from $100 to a few thousand, depending on where he is um, on that spectrum for income. All right, so Ted's got 150000 plus tax debt. Mm -hmm. You're saying in an offer and compromise, he can get out of it for a hundred to a fifteen. Absolutely, because an offer and compromise is not really a negotiation. It's more of a math formula and knowing the code and knowing the law. So basically the numbers either work or they don't. And when they work is when you don't have any assets. Correct. And you have limited amount of income. Absolutely. And in Ted's case we can control his income because Sarah now owns the business. And one of the things here that's important to note is that some of this liability to the IRS is also going to be income tax liability based on Ted filing his tax returns mm -hmm. for five years, or failing to do so. While income tax liability is dischargeable in bankruptcy, he, he would have had to have filed his taxes for... Three years. Know, well, then they had to be at least filed for two years. They had to have come due three years ago, and he couldn't have been assessed in the last 240 days. Reality, the bankruptcy discharges and gets rid of all of everything else, and the offer and compromise will deal with the taxes even though he filed his tax returns yesterday. So what's super cool here, if you really think about it, if it is it's the offer and compromise we're using to get rid of the tax debt, the bankruptcy laws we're using to get rid of all of the other debt. Sometimes we use bankruptcy to get rid of income tax debt if we meet that the, the, the But in this case, rule. Ted has $50,000 right. so, to the payroll taxes, so he might as well get rid of Ted it. Ted and Sarah the came in with a massive problem thinking, I just want to check out. End of the conclusion is they now have a new landscaping business that, that has the assets free and clear with no liabilities. The bankruptcy got rid of the credit card debt, the unsecured debt, all the obligations, and Sarah's credit card debt. The offer and compromise gets rid of the $150,000 of tax debt. End of day now, Ted and Sarah have their whole life ahead of them, and they have gotten rid of all of the debt. And they kept everything. And they kept everything. They had to borrow 20000 from mom in order to buy the assets, so they'll pay, her, they'll pay her back over time. The whole point being is nothing is desperate if you look to find the solution and take your time and find the right, the right fix to the problem. There are always, there's always a, a solution to a problem. You just need to find it. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality.